3, that upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins and sat down on the right hand of the majesty of high, having become so much better than angels, he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. What did he inherit? Okay? So, you have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God has anointed you. So, did God just anoint himself? Or are we talking about two separate individuals here? Therefore, God, your God has anointed you. Didn't Jesus, wasn't that, that word Messiah, doesn't that mean anointed one? Right? Why did Jesus go to John the Baptist? To be baptized. John the Baptist said plainly and clearly, was John using hyperbole when he said, I'm not worthy to baptize you, you should baptize me. Was he just exaggerating? No. John meant it. Jesus said, suffer it to be so that all righteousness may be fulfilled. What righteousness was he talking about? He was talking about what's found in the book of Daniel, when the Messiah would be anointed at his baptism. Are you guys looking at me like deer in the heavens? Your advent, you should know this. And some of you look like you're about to fall asleep. Again, no, this is deep work. stuff. Work. Work. I mean, it's, it's, it's really it's deep stuff. stuff because there, there's people that believe in the Trinity, and we don't believe in the Trinity the way that a lot of people believe in the Trinity. And, and in my opinion, uh, I believe that God spoke His, his voice. Jesus is the Word of God, and, and somehow God split Himself. But the Bible says the Lord our God is one. One. Well, this is why it's the mystery of God. I mean, you can go throughout all eternity and still not understand that. Was Lucifer able to understand the mystery of God Himself? <laughs> Three in one? Okay. Uh, there's a mystery. I, I, I'm not even going to try to explain that to you. But we don't need to see if we could explain that, then we would be equal with God. Okay. So there are certain things that I have already know that I've come to the conclusion that I don't need to have an explanation for that. What I'm able to see clearly from the Word of God is that Jesus is a distinct individual. The Father is a distinct individual, and the Holy Spirit is a distinct individual. And you find all three going back again to the Gospel of John at his baptism. Jesus is being baptized. He goes under the water. He comes out of the water. What descends upon him like the form of a dove? The Holy Spirit. A separate, distinct personage. And then the Father speaks from heaven. You have all three of them there. Not one doing ventriloquism, but, but three, right? And that's all I need to know. You know what I'm saying? Each one has a different function. Yes. Very good. Because listen, when Jesus came to this earth and he took on humanity, who did he always pray to? And where was he, where was he thinking the Father was at? All right? So, again, you start to put those things together and it helps you understand a little bit better what, what the Bible says is the Godhead, not the Trinity. You never find that word Trinity in all of Scripture. But Paul uses the word the Godhead. Okay, so, verse 8, But to the Son, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is a scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. And, verse 10, you, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth. Now, is that word, Lord, capitalized? Yes. Yeah. 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 Wow. What is that word? What's the difference between that word capitalized and when it's referred to like King David or King Saul? as a small case, Lord. Part of the that's the difference between divinity and humanity. Okay? So you, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundations of the earth. 
Who led in, in, in the Gospel of John? Who was the one that created everything? So again, you have to go back to each these these different books to keep bringing you back to the focus that it's on Jesus has never left that. So when it talks about therefore God, your God, you're seeing Jesus and the Father. You lay, you Lord, in the beginning laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands. They will perish, but what? Who will remain? Who is the you here? The Father or the Son? Jesus. Jesus. So if the heavens and the earth will pass away, but you will remain, what does that make him? Eternal. And that makes him eternal, that makes him God. Right? So, oh, verse 11. They will perish, but you remain, and they will all grow old like a garment, like a cloak. You will fold them up, and they will be changed, but you are the same, and your years will never fail. You are the same, your years will never fail. Isn't that the same as saying the same yesterday, today, and forever? Now, who does that speak of? You know that's speaking about God, right? So, again, it's easy to show that Jesus is God, that that's what the Bible is saying. Why do you think Jehovah's Witnesses have what's called the New World Translation? See, because you can take, you can take the King James Version, the New King James Version, the NIV Version, the American Standard Version, and a thousand other versions that are based off the original language, and they will all show that Jesus is divine. God. Because they made it to suit their... Of course. Of course. So, and this is where we'll end. Let me read a couple more of these verses. Like a cloak, you will fold them up, and they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will not fail. But to which of the angels has he ever said... This is what, he, this is what Lucifer always wanted to hear. This was his dream. This was what he coveted. And this is what he never heard. And when he looked at Christ, he became envious and jealous. But to which of the angels has he ever said, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool? Again, verse 14. Angels, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who would inherit salvation? The angels are made to serve you and I in this road of salvation that we're on. Satan wants you to worship him as God. God created him as Lucifer to serve you in your walk with God. So again, do you see how much better Jesus Christ is over the angels? Okay, next week we'll continue on with chapter 2. Our closing hymn is hymn number 249.
uh, take a seat. Let me just share a couple things with you. Will you give me two minutes? I hope I'm not burning anybody's lunch. All right, listen, with what you saw transpire in Paris last night, throughout the day yesterday, that's on the other side of the world. And it's easy for us to sit here and say, those poor people, let's pray for them, because it doesn't touch us. It hasn't touched us. But what I'm going to tell you is that very soon it will. You've got to know this. If there is nothing that you heard today that excites you, what can God possibly do to break through to your hard hearts? God has sent me here to share His Word with you. Have any of you ever read the book of Ezekiel all the way through? Right? The book of Ezekiel. God tells Ezekiel the prophet, Go to the children of Israel, and I want you to tell them this. They're not going to listen to you, but I want you to tell them anyway. And he tells them, and they don't listen. And God says, tell them this. And Ezekiel says, thus saith the Lord. And again, God says, they're not going to listen to you. This is who we are as a people today. Amen. God has sent us message after message after message. And we sit in church, and we fall asleep. And nothing excites us until we go home and football's on tomorrow. Yes. Or who's going to win the NASCAR race? Or am I going to get to play golf? Or where am I going to go? What am I going to do? What is going to wake us up? When are we going to realize where we're at in Earth's history? What more can I say to you? What more can God do for you? If you won't do it yourselves, if you will not submit to Him, there is no hope for you. Do you understand that? Amen. God has called me as a watchman set on the Tower of Zion to proclaim what He says to His people. Wake up! Amen. And that's all I'm here to tell you. Is just wake up. This will not go on forever. Your bank account will not last. Your mobile home will not last. Your nice food in your home will not last. Either you trust Him now and you be used by Him to proclaim God's glory and be that remnant people who Ellen White saw in vision going from house to house proclaiming the third angel's message, which is righteousness by faith in Christ alone. Wake up. Know that this can be us. Amen. You want to go into captivity? Because that's where you're headed. It wasn't good for Judah. It wasn't good for Israel. They didn't enjoy it. And you won't enjoy it either. But what will it take to wake you up? What will it take to get you to, to just look into God's Word and get excited about it? Amen, See that what it says is true and it's real and it's going to happen. Whether you believe it or not. What more can I say? What more can I do? This stuff interests me. This is what gets me excited. I don't like working. I don't like sweating outside. But I love God's Word and I love being able to share it with God's people. But I'm not here to explain to your friends and the people you come in contact with what you believe. Either you learn to do that yourself or there is no help or hope for you. It's not my job. I didn't go to seminary. I know this stuff. Why do I know it? Because I spent 10 years studying it. When I first became a Christian, I still study it today. And the more I study, the more God shows me how real and how true the Adventist message is. If this doesn't excite you, go be a Sunday keeper. Your space in the pew, let it be filled by somebody who has zeal and excitement for the Word of God. What more can I say? Let's bow our heads as we close in prayer. Heavenly Father, truly we are the church of the zeal. Lord, I'm not laughing because I think it's funny. I'm laughing because it just breaks my heart. I don't know how to get across what's burning inside of my heart to make a difference in the life of your people. Father, you love them with a love that has spent eternity. 
And there's not one person here that you want to be lost. You have said in your word that you have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. But you want all of us to turn from our sins and turn to you so that we can be healed and we can be cleansed and we can be with you. Father, we are your children. I pray that you help us to realize who we really are in Jesus Christ. Fill our hearts. Change our lives and break through this heart of stone. And help us to see where we're at in earth's history. Father, I just pray and I beg you, pour your spirit out upon us. Not because we deserve it, but because we need it. We are perishing and we are dying in our own sin. Father, all these things I ask and pray in Jesus' name.